I'm Group Captain Narang. Uh, they have already introduced me. Uh, I'm basically a helicopter pilot uh, and a researcher. And um, I love to uh, learn this opportunist uh, field which has come in our country. Uh, this is a, uh, I will say, golden period of, for the drone industry where, uh, you know, uh, how, I've been following aeronautics for quite some time. And uh, in my view, a drone is an area which is uh, an opportunity for India, opportunity for startups, opportunity for MSMEs. A drone is different from aviation field for various reasons uh, you people are aware. Uh, but what is, what is different for me is Indian drone industry is led by startups and MSMEs. So that is what gives me a lot of confidence that drone industry will be a different industry from the aviation or aeronautics industry of India. In my view, aeronautics industry till now has been predominantly a low value industry. Uh, we have designed many aircraft in the past. Uh, in one of my chapter was challenges of aeronautics design development in India. And I found that number of platforms were designed in India, including uh, one of the very famous platform Marut uh, fighter plane, uh, which was the first uh, fighter plane designed in entire Asia. So uh, despite developing those machines, we never translated those developments into becoming a aviation manufacturing hub. But in drone, I am a I am little more positive. And uh, today we will be talking about that as soon as my slide comes. So that's one. Uh, in today's uh, presentation, we'll try to understand what is drone, what are its commercial applications, what are military UAVs, and one very interesting point is what is the small drone threat, a small UAV threat. If number of UAVs have existed for decades, why small UAV has become a threat and what are the countermeasures? Thereafter, we will try to look at India's UAV program. When I was doing study on aeronautics, I realized I did not know a lot of Indian uh, programs uh, where India had designed some of those aircraft. So that was very, um, you know, shocking for me that I didn't know about India and I was looking outside for, you know, uh, motivation. So then we will come to India's uh, drone rules 2021, which pertain to civil drone operations in India. And I, lastly, I'll bit about, uh, uh, I'll just touch about uh, on touch up on innovation challenges and funding and uh, before we uh, call it a day I will certainly talk about random thought and I look forward to interaction with you I am basically I have already introduced but just to tell you I have also written a lot on make in India well, at least four or five papers I have written on design and make in India and civil aviation, military aviation MRO, SWAM drone policies so uh, it has been my passion to understand India's capability in uh, aviation design development and manufacturing. Uh, I, I belong to an organization called Drone Federation of India. Yeah, somebody say. So uh, I, I, I am associated with an organization and a part of organization, a wonderful organization called Drone Federation of India. Uh, it has about 80 manufacturers, 120 service providers, and about 2,000 drone pilots, and numbers might be more. Uh, in the past, past few, uh, you know, uh, sometime, uh, this organization has been strongly promoting drone policy for reforms. Uh, you know, encouraging manufacturing, certification, training, adoption, and recently they signed a MOU with uh, Japan's Fukushima robot test field, uh, with the aim to understand the best learnings and uh, uh, create an eco, uh, an enabling ecosystem in India. That has been the endeavor. Uh, as I said, I strongly believe that drone and counter drones, and I also happen to study counter drone system capability development in India. And uh, that gave me a lot of confidence that India and uh, Indian innovators led by startups like you have a potential to make India and innovation and manufacturing led high technology, high value industries of India. And why do I say that? I will talk about it in my last slide. This is what I intend covering. Uh, I, as I had said, uh, what is drone, commercial application, military UAV, small UAV threat, uh, UAV, India's UAV program, drone rules, innovation challenges, uh, fundings, and uh, random thoughts, which I thought 
it is best to share with the young minds who are most fertile minds next okay this i have covered so uh, drone federation of india as i said i belong to uh, we can talk about it what is important is mou with japan's uh, fukushima robot test field where we are trying to learn endeavor is to understand learn the best practices and adopt it in india next this is my firm belief and i would like to plant it everywhere because this is the sector where um, innovators can contribute in india's uh, journey it is a it is an uh, uh, upwards graph and this is the best time to join this not only drone even counter drone is an area where indians are looking forward to next what is drone so drone is an aircraft that can operate remotely without a pilot uh, on board and can be operated autonomously also next uh, different types of drones just to uh, give some example there is a single rotor uh, on the top left which is basically a rotary wing uh, thing then we have multi rotor on the right uh, below is a small fixed wing and then we have a vtol fixed wing with uh, Uh, one of the company calls it a switch wing, uh, uh, wing uh, switch uh, aircraft. So uh, basically, it takes off vertically and then flies like a normal aircraft. Next, drones uh, can be launched in multiple ways: hand launch, catapult launch, uh, vertical takeoff, vehicle launch, also some runway launch and uh, net recovery. In fact, some people use even uh, no. There is a railing. From railing also, it can be launched. Next, drone components uh, typically consist, as it's shown, it's got a airframe, it's got GPS, uh, 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 flight controller, propellers, uh, electronic speed controller, receiver, battery, motor, landing gear, and uh, payload. Payload is uh, you know cameras, uh, other sensors, or logistic payload can also be there next so drone can do some of the dull work you know you are doing for long same thing again and again maintaining accuracy uh, you know uh, doing the same thing spraying over the same area small areas you cover then you fly in parallel to another area so drones are ideally suited you just program them well and then let let them do their job next dirty if you have to do something you know sewage line uh, inspection you have to do where um, uh, areas where where they are less accessible all those uh, many people die in india because of sewage inspections or cleaning so a lot of uh, things can be reduced next and dangerous you know you you have volcanoes fires electricity uh, you know monitoring all that can be done by drones next distant which are far off so you know um, wherever you your drone you send a drone and it does job for you you can sit in your location and monitor what is happening at some distance especially for border or rekis or some areas where you know uh, your road infrastructure is, is not there your road connectivity or other issues are not there you can easily use drone next data so uh, you know you uh, there are a lot of data can be collected by using different sensors and this can be analyzed and lot of companies and lot of users are benefiting by using the data so data is a you know new uh, gold or new uh, path so people are, i think data is becoming very very relevant and people are finding new ways managing the, this data is a challenge managing uh, getting the quality data is a challenge so i think data is a very important point next next disaster relief uh, we have seen tsunami we have we have heard of uh, flooding earthquakes and india is a very diverse country so every uh, you know entire year some activity or other in indians are in some situations where uh, you know disasters are uh, they do stuck uh, and uh, india will certainly can benefit a lot from usage of this technology in many ways it not only does the survey it can carry out it can become an airborne mobile tower it can you know provide medical relief it can provide food water anything you talk 
uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some emergency solution. It can be uh, uh, even uh, supply medicines. Next, changer drones, uh, you know, uh, they are already being tested world over. And uh, to, to uh, appraise you, I, uh, you are from Chennai, so you know, uh, two of the companies of, uh, who belong to Chennai are developing uh, passenger drones. They initially will be uh, manned taxis, then later on they will be unmanned taxis. E-plane is one of them, and there's another one. Next. Coming to military drones, uh, just to give you a glimpse of uh, military drones. Next. You know, uh, these are the propeller-driven long uh, um, uh, drones, which basically carry some payload. Uh, uh, they have... Uh, gradually, people are started with the propeller drones. Now, people are developing into much more advanced. So they carry from 100 kg payload to about 2,000 or 3,000 pay, pay, payload, and they can travel as much as about you know 6,000 kilometers, 6,000 to 7,000. These are male. Male is medium altitude, long endurance uh, um, UAV, and India is developing Rustam 2. Rustam 2 is, is this class of male UAV of India. Next. Hail is high altitude, long endurance. Normally, these uh, UAVs are jet engine or turbofan engine, and they have a range close to high subsonic. Sometimes they have supersonic, but they are rare. Normally, they are high subsonic. Uh, they go with a few efficiency, fly long distances, and of course, they have a much higher speed. And people are slowly adopting the stealth feature in these kind of all these drones. So they want the max minimum signature to be seen. You see the engine uh, intake is placed above the airframe so that you know less uh, thermal signatures are below. So every small thing is kept in mind to reduce the uh, radar signatures, increase the range, uh, good better sensor, uh, put better sensors, and uh, you know uh, get the maximum information and also put the armament on these drones. So next, the, this is the new class of uh, drones. Uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicles. India is also developing one. Uh, so uh, these are, uh, you know, flying wing configuration is uh, uh, attempted world over. The idea of flying wing in, uh, configuration is that they provide and they add stealth features. They have, uh, you know, uh, retractable undercarriages, um, under wing uh, payload so that minimum um, radar signature is given to the adversary so that they can go closer to the adversary location, either pick up or attack their locations and come back. And uh, they are also going to be acting as a wingman to the manned platform. So what is the uh, what will happen is manned data will stay behind. These unmanned platforms will go forward. Uh, carry on, and they will be controlled by the manned aircraft uh, who's flying behind. That could be a fighter, that could be a transport aircraft, that could be a bomber or a helicopter. And uh, these aircraft will go forward, uh, launch and attack at the areas which are dangerous, and then uh, come back. So this, these are the new technologies being adopted world over. Americans are developing, Russians have developed, um, uh, Europe is developing, and Euro, America has developed X-45, X-47. Uh, Russians have developed uh, S-70. Uh, the Chinese have also developed these, and Indians are also developing. So uh, it's a technology, very exciting technology, but at the same time, um, we are manned and unmanned. So threat to the human beings will reduce. Uh, riskier job will be done by, first by the manned aircraft, unmanned aircraft, and then manned aircraft will come into play. Next. So why a UAV? So it's not a UAV and UAV storm. It's a small UAV which is posing a threat. Next. So uh, there's an attack on Russian base in 2018 where small drones, uh, 13 drones carried out a US, uh, Russian uh, air base and the naval base in Syria. And they carried barely 400 grams of explosive and they caused some damage. And Russians had to use very expensive uh, air to ground, uh, ground to air missiles. And uh, they, they did uh, resorted to jamming ground to air missiles. And later on, they carried out a military action on ground to neutralize those people who were launching these drones. Next. So locating these places becomes irrelevant. Saudi uh, drone attack on Saudi Arabia of 2019 is a very famous. Uh, world was shocked to see the impact of this drone. Half of the Saudi oil, uh, you know, 
um, producing capabilities had come to an halt and uh, it had number of drones and missiles simultaneously being launched by the Houthi rebel uh, and they uh, almost created a crippling effect on a world oil supply. And recently we saw how Armenia was subjugated and Azerbaijan won the war in 1920 by effective utilization of uh, Turkish drone. And uh, we, we were ourselves uh, on the receiving end on uh, 27 June 2021 when one drone, at, armed drone carried out an attack and air base and uh, you know, it caused a lot of uh, concerns uh, around India. And this ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia, you see uh, drones have remain in prominence, how they are making an impact, whether, uh, you know, creation of a media. And here, I would also like to draw your attention, how Chinese were able to, uh, those some of the uh, drones uh, used by the Ukrainians were Chinese drones. How Chinese were able to uh, deny Ukrainian use of drones in the critical phase of the war, uh, uh, when they wanted to hold. So uh, some critical components which we use them in the peace time uh, can be leveraged by adversaries to uh, you know, uh, deny our capabilities. So this has to be kept in mind. Next. Now, how do we counter, counter this threat? Small drone threat. SUS is a small UAS, unmanned aerial system. Next. Detection, tracking, utilization of destruction of small, slow, low flying and small US is a challenge not only for India, but around the world. So uh, people are developing new radars, uh, which probably have a different frequency you have a band, uh, have a relatively lower ranges. Then they're trying ESA, um, PESA radar, X band, S band. So all of these radars are being tried and then integrated in their existing air defense system. Similarly, people have resorted to RF uh, uh, detection and tracking, uh, which gives you approximate location, uh, then electro-optic and infrared and acoustic systems. So new, new innovative solutions are being uh, identified. Even detection of civil drones is a challenge. People are looking at, you know, using remote ID to identify uh, with the collaborative uh, detection of a friendly drone. Next. Neutralization, uh, various neutralization systems are being developed, jamming, spoofing of uh, GPS, GLONASS or Vedu, uh, lasers for dazzling of EOIR systems or destruction of critical parts by keeping it focused on critical parts. Uh, also, uh, but remember, as we are developing lasers for, for a car, uh, neutralizing drone, and remember one laser can at a time can neutralize one drone. So if multiple drones attack, it is a challenge for them. And some of the developers are already working on anti-laser paints, on reflectors, so that, you know, reduce the effectiveness of laser. So when you have a technology, there's a counter technology and there's a counter to counter technology. Next. High power microwave uh, is uh, also one of the solutions. High power microwave is being seen as one of the solution to neutralize number of uh, UAVs simultaneously. But the impact of these lasers and the hyper microwave is they may impact the uh, other systems which are operating in that area. Uh, also, people are developing kamikaze drones or defender drones where, you know, defender has either goes and strikes the rogue drone or uh, your uh, uh, drone which is striking you or they carry some system to neutralize either a gun or a net or whatever uh, counter drone the system they want to do it. Similarly, people are developing a swarm of drones to defend a drone. And remember, none of these single counter drone system is proving to be a most effective system. So what people are looking at multiple um, uh, or hybrid counter drone systems to neutralize. And one more area which probably uh, India has to you know, look into it, getting an airborne counter airborne, uh, unmanned aerial system. because. You have a counter uh, airborne, like you put it on a helicopter or transport or a, or a attack helicopter or a fighter aircraft. So this machine can fly and move towards the um, threat, so that you know you, it can cover larger area. Should you feel threatened, you can launch them and uh, you know take uh, defensive action. So for that technology, these new technologies have to be validated, then integrated with the manned aircraft. Next. 
indigenous program brief, briefly touch upon it uh, india has developed many drones there are micro drones developed by uh, nal and then nishant and panchi these are uh, nishant was a launch from a railing as shown here on the top and then uh, panchi was a wheeled version of the same drone uh, and archer or rustam one rustam one is made from rutron kit and uh, um, it was it was manned aircraft which was modified into uh, unmanned version and it also acted as a test platform for the bigger rustam two and now uh, our drdo ad uh, has made an armed version of it so they have integrated one of the air to ground missiles uh, as an armed version next this is rustam 2 uh, it is in the um, trial phase uh, it's already uh, flown about 24000 feet i think um, so uh, it has to fly to about 27 and then 30000 feet it's flown about 10 hours of endurance it's already achieved there once it reaches the optimum uh, you know performance level then the um, uh, user acceptance it means air force will start doing the acceptance test for these drones and uh, then uh, probably it will induct it so we see uh, it may take an year to get inducted but uh, it is moving in a pro promising trajectory now next this is a innovative uh, forward looking uh, program launched by the hindustan aeronautics limited which is called combat aerial teaming system it will have a, a mother drone mother 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 aircraft mother aircraft can be a fighter aircraft it can be a transport aircraft or you know some other platform which they think or trainer aircraft and then it uh, which they they have called it a command aircraft number one then there is a warrior drone warrior drone is a unmanned fighter drone which will go ahead of this manned aircraft and carry out surveillance or destroy the adversary then there is a hunter hunter is a cruise missile and then there is a alpha alpha is an air launch flexible asset swarm remember indian uh, army has displayed a arm swarm of 75 drones in january 2021 so those things are being now made air launch so swarm indians had developed now they are being made air launch and it is been done with the startups startup which has become a now an msme and uh, that's the promising part and even i uh, let me tell you the warrior which is being developed the 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 com industry is playing a important role in their development next okay come down to civil drones let's change over to uh, what are the rules if you have to do uh, drone rules were promulgated last year on 25th august drones up to 500 kg are covered under this rule how us are categorized us is unmanned aerial system or drones uh, aeroplane rotor craft and hybrid unmanned aircraft they are further divided into remotely piloted aircraft uh, model rpas uh, uh, remotely piloted aircraft system and autonomous ua unmanned aircraft next now what is the classification nano micro small medium large nano can be flown by anybody uh, but there will be some guidelines which will follow micro up to 250 uh, more than 250 gram but less than 2 kg come under this category a small or more than 2 kg but less than 25 kg medium or more than 25 kg less than 150 kg and large are more than 150 kg next drone certification now this is a wonderful scheme but uh, because if indians have to make drones they have to be certified so drone certification mechanism has been introduced in india uh, so i think this is one initiative which will differentiate india's drone industry from the aviation industry because certification will means you can get into production that process has been made entirely online so you have to apply on a digital sky platform you look below there, there's a digital sky platform uh, you know photograph i have put and Uh, you, you have to follow certain procedures submit your documents and they have a mandate to do this process complete this process in 60 days which is unheard of in india and this uh, certification will be valid for 10 years after you have got the uh, drone uh, certification each drone will have a uin unique 
identification number, which is a certified drone. For that, you will get a UIN. Again, there's a process online available. It's there. Next. Drone pilots, like, a, uh, you know, um, as you drive vehicle, you, uh, you need a license. Same with drone pilots operating in um, manned, unmanned aviation needed. A very light, a simple requirement. You have to be class 10 pass. And you have to complete the diseases syllabus and validity. This certificate will be valid for 10 years. And uh, there are approved uh, uh, remote pilot training organizations under which you will cover it. And that's I'll cover it next. Next. So training organizations, how, what will be the, uh, you know, authorization, how these RPTOs uh, will be authorized, their syllabus, uh, you know, training and procedure manual, all these things are covered. These uh, templates will be used by training organization to bring standardization in drone training. Next. So drone operations, entire India is divided in three uh, uh, segments, green, green zone, yellow zone, and red zone. Green zone means there will be some uh, procedures and you fly. You don't need permission from anybody. So mechanism will be formed, but you can fly. When uh, unmanned traffic management system comes, you have to fly, file a flight plan online and fly. If it is clear, clear. no permission required. But if you go into a yellow zone, you have to take permission from yellow. Uh, ATC, if you go into red zone, you have to take a permission from a central government. And uh, carriage of dangerous goods and munitions will be prohibited for civil operations. For civil operation. Next. So uh, these are the digital sky platform and you will realize that how simple it has become. All approvals through this. Next. So unmanned traffic management system, when it comes, all drone operations will have to operate through these. Research development and testing, if you are doing under research development and testing, you don't need any type certification, UIN, remote pilot license. But it is advisable to have a remote pilot license because that will give you safety. And um, But research and development and testing can undertake can be undertaken without this. One. Any R&D, uh, who all can be R&D entities? These are all given in drone rules 2021. They are downloadable. Anybody can download it. So uh, any startup, authorized testing agent, entity, US manufacturer, all that. And all drones operated in civil area, airspace need to have a drone insurance. So that process has been initiated. In due course, Drone Promotion Council will be set up and drone corridors will be set up in India for cargo delivery of drones. Next. Uh, Indian government this year initiated a productivity link incentive scheme. So if you are manufacturing drones and drone component, 20% of your uh, GST will be refunded to you. So that's an incentive provided for five years. So if you are getting into drone manufacturing, uh, uh, this is the best time to get into it. And uh, entire procedure has already been operated and people are applying for uh, uh, CLI in incentive. Next. Positive indigenization list. So Indian government has, defense uh, ministry has been promoting certain items which can be produced in India. Uh, these items will have to be procured from only from Indian entities because some Indian entities have already developed them. So um, what it indicates is Indian government is willing to support you if you manufacturing products which are available in India. They can be uh, given only to the Indian entities. Next. This is the you know digital sky airspace the space map. You go into digital sky web platform, so you can see the entire India, which is the red zone. You see red zones are marked in dots and on the border. Then there is a green zone. If you expand them, you will be able to see the yellow zones also. Next. Now this is I have brought down to a state. How state looks like? Green zones are green. There are red and yellow. Next. Next. Now you can see it even more closely. No, here. You can see the yellow zone in a circle. Um, these are the airfields, which are which are yellow zone, and they, are, they have to be taken permission from ATC. Red zones, you are not supposed to fly, and green zones, you can fly with the, under the UTM. Next. This is your area. So know your area, unless you have permission. Next. Okay. 
coming to innovation challenges uh, ministry of uh, defense innovation organization follows innovation for defense excellence uh, in this case uh, 1.5 crore is given to you for developing a uh, if you win the competition you have to give your proposal uh, similar amount you have to spend from your pocket so 50% of funding is paid now uh, government has come up with another uh, part of idex which is called idex prime and it is about to start soon in which up to 10 crore 50% of the funding will be paid to you for developing a technology which, which the dumb, uh, problem statement will be given by idex the second uh, uh, innovation challenge or or the one of the you know uh, program where funding can be obtained is technology development fund it is uh, run by drdo and up to 90% funding can be given in this program the third program is the meher baba competition which is only one program has been conducted by indian air force where 10 lakh was the prize 10 crore was the funding and 100 crore was the order Uh, for, it started in uh, 2018 and it culminated in 2021 it is likely to be made an annual competition the meher baba 2 uh, starting is awaited uh, the fourth program which has come up is bhumi bsf high technology undertaking for maximizing innovation so this is started last year wonderful initiative uh, by the para uh, capf central armed police forces so i think uh, the opportunities for indian innovators is increasing government in the budget 202223 also proposed kisan drone where you know they are going to encourage how drones will be used in agriculture field and also swamitva uh, is another program where which is run by government where all village houses are being uh, scanned or uh, uh, you know uh, they are carrying out surveys and that survey is used to empower those village on the house owners and they can take loans so it is being done across india and many companies are benefiting out of it uh, budget also announced that iti courses will be initiated for drone technicians uh, recently uh, in fact uh, just a month ago uh, in the budget it was decided that 25% of defense r and d budget will be sec- uh, earmarked for private sector now this is the first time where private sector is being told that we will be giving an r&d budget so far private sector company was there uh, allowed to manufacture spend on their own and come back and do it but uh, this is a uh, new initiative and also uh, recently again government came up with 18 defense platform to be designed and manufactured with the private sector uh, these platform will be made under make one make one means where 70% of the funding will be paid by the government need to is you make it give it to the government and they will buy it if they know that uh, this the technology was not available they will buy it. and you have made it third is special purpose vehicle in special purpose vehicle what happens you have to become uh, join with drdo and make an independent identity to develop a particular system so these three mechanisms are there we can always discuss it later next this is uh, uh, department of defense production where make in india initiatives or make to projects you can uh, search next these are my random thoughts so you know focus indian in entities have to learn to focus on r and d quality certification standards that is how we will become globally competitive and uh, we have to understand the requirement of user you developing something on your own without knowing what user wants will not make your product a good one and also you need to know what are the government initiatives if you know the government initiative you can leverage the 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 uh, you know some of the opportunities which are provided by government of initiative so knowing the government initiatives helps you prepare well understanding the funding challenges you know when you get into a business startup if you know these funding challenges economic viability of your business it makes your job easier and whenever you have to sell anything to the government if you do not know the policies you do not know the procedure you do not know the tax structure you do not know what where all uh, what all money has to be given as a you know as a uh, in various uh, forms uh, that process becomes a challenge when you get into it because you when you make a innovative prototype or a product 
and you go to them they say no we want this procedure so you lose out that you need to prepare for that and very important when you get into the innovation competition and then you get into a prototype development and then the procurement procedure if you do not know the entire cycle you might be groping in the dark and you may miss out so i think you need to understand the entire process and also what are the times of delays and uh, remember you should also be aware how many new initiatives are taken if you hear, listen to the old timers there were many problems but if you see the present a lot of problems are being solved by the government initiatives so if you are aware it makes your life easier um, so new chal new opportunities have to be leveraged ma maximum next this is my job, question to you if anyone would like to answer i would be very happy so what are your choices as an entrepreneur job in india work for multinationals startup create valuation sell it startup work towards creating a global brand and uh, be ready for failures uh, i pardon my spelling mistake be ready for failures what is your choice next this is abdul kala i uh, is my favorite uh, you know scientist make in india is quite ambitious he is not only president he is also very uh, ambitious and uh, well meaning guy for india who has been advising us we need to learn from him we need to ensure that we do not become the low cost low value assembly line of the world if we go on that path the growth will come at a great price and pain to the people we need to be ori do original research to design develop and manufacture in india by using ideas of the youth you are the youth and the wisdom of ages we have many many uh, you know scriptures which give you a lot of wisdom and vibrancy of the de democracy we have all the three uh, things and uh, my best wishes to you next thank you i'm through uh, i'm calling from the sona group of institution i just wanted to know the certification process how much uh, time it would take sir once we apply for it online see uh, mrs suresh the challenge today is uh, government has given a deadline to uh, quality council of india is the designated body to give certification for drone and they have also uh, designated two certification bodies which are independent uh, you know private bodies which are which can give you certification for drone uh, they have to certify the drone in 60 days but the challenge is uh, you have to ensure the documentation is complete in all respects and if you if your documentation is complete in all respects uh, um, they, they they have promised that 60 days you will get your certification and uh, remember in aviation there is no timeline in the drones the timeline has been designated and many times the problem comes when your uh, process has some mistake or it is incomplete i hope i have answered your question yeah thank you mr narak and uh, how important it is to also get the drone pilot license uh, along with the certification is See, it required uh, is it mandatory or you can just have a certificate and start uh, you know manufacturing or doing r and d on the uh, drone See, uh, drone manufacturing and drone pilot license are different things. You can manufacture, but if you have to test that drone, then you it is you know you need a. It's better that you have a license. You, you understand? These are two different things. If you are going to operate a drone, you need a license. If you are going to manufacture a drone, you need a manuf. Uh, you don't need that uh, pilot license. And um, uh, so these are the two different aspects. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that answer, uh, Mr. Narag. One more thing: How much time it would take to get a, a drone pilot license? Uh, is drone, there any timeline for that also? Yeah, yeah. Drone pilot license. Uh, there are uh, different labels for uh, uh, small drones. If you are doing a uh, quadcopter, uh, multi-copter, it is different. If you are doing a fixed wing, it is different. If you are doing a switch drone, it is a little different. Uh, but as a whole, uh, drone training. Uh, for each is varying between 5 to 10 days okay and uh, the process as you finish the training uh, i think um, the certificate uh, does not take much time to be issued they have a specified timeline you will get it within that and earlier it was supposed to go to dgca dgca 
uh, removed. It was supposed to be a license. Now if license, uh, it is no more a license. It's a certificate which can be issued by the training body, uh, approved training body. I hope I have answered yeah. this today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And the training body, whoever is there approved, that is already listed in the website according to you, right? Digital Sky website, you can simultaneously open it and see it. They are already there. Okay. So we have to go only through those bodies to get the certificate. Yeah, yeah. No well, you nobody other than those which are approved. And there are many of them, you can always uh, approach them. And numbers can increase and you can also, those who feel they they can, uh, you know, uh, train, they can also register them themselves. They need to have, follow the approval mechanism. Anybody can become a training body, but they need to follow certain requirements which are listed in the don't uh, RPTO training uh, policy. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Naran, there is one last question I want to ask you is that, uh, uh, see, academically, uh, this is gaining a lot of, um, uh, you know, importance. And there is a lot of, um, uh, what is a fan following in, in the, for the drone sector by the young students and the aspiring minds. So uh, in the academic setup, uh, uh, can we start the same training thing uh, for, for the drone uh, training? Uh, can we register as an academic institution for training? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, it is encouraged. Because academic institutions, if they go through a proper training process, it's, it's, it's better for them. And they, they can also, you know, if they want to be on a safer side, they can register themselves even as an R&D institution. As well as they can have a training institution or they can collaborate with the training institution. One of their own startup or one of their own, uh, you know, uh, mechanism, uh, they, whatever they have. So depending on how much they want to get into it, it is up to them. They can have a collaboration, take permission for training a school to operate there. So all academic institutions or government institutions are given preference on those. those. Thank you, Mr. Narang. Very kind of you. You have answered all my questions. Thank you no, so much. I, no, I hope. Uh, I have one more thing. Uh, academic institutions, I would like to share my views. Uh, India, uh, the drone industry is evolving into a manufacturing industry. And to evolve it as a manufacturing industry, we are still dependent on motors, we are dependent on batteries, you know, propellers. I think some of the structures we have started making it. Um, so um, my humble request to all academic institutions is work and understand with the industry what are the capability technology gaps. Don't do research on things which is already existing. So research is meant to be focused on working on technology or capability gaps or improving the capability uh, so that your students contribute to the entire capability development in the country. And also I would like academic institutions to work with the industry to know the economic viability and acceptability of the users so that your research becomes an output oriented research. So collaborate with industry bodies which are meaningful, which according to you give value addition to you and then, uh, you know, contribute. Because if you work with the industry body, you work with the users, users can be civilian, can be agriculture users, can be, you know, military users. If you work with them, you will be doing a research and academic study, which is more value oriented and uh, getting your original, uh, getting actually drones being trained, training by establishment there, getting the R&D set up there or getting the testing lab there, you will be creating an ecosystem which will be very, very productive. Thank you. Point well taken, noted, sir. Thank you so much. And anybody has any issue, please, you are welcome to get in touch with me or Drone Federation of India. They have all my contacts. You are welcome to get in touch. Uh, my email, I will just give share it on that. So kindly send your uh, PowerPoint presentation for us to deep dive into the subject further uh, because you have made it into a very structured manner. So we would like to go in the same uh, flow uh, so that, you know, we, we can uh, get the optimum uh, uh, this thing out of it. That is my request to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I will uh, tell them, uh, please share, uh, send, uh, give, share your email. Uh, they will mail it to you. And uh, remember, I have authored a book called India's Quest for UAVs and Challenges. I have discussed about 
what academic institutions uh, where we lagged in aeronautics institution and i've also authored paper on storm technologies uh, drone policies so i would urge people to read and uh, add value rather than you know uh, doing the same thing again uh, something which has been already researched um, take advantage of it and move forward thank you sure sir uh, your book could be available in all the major uh, uh, portals or do we have they are, they, they are available for few days i think the new print is about to come otherwise you write to kw publishers they will uh, pro provide you thank you so much thank you and if you don't get it may send me mail i will connect you thank you sir so yes uh, bharat ram you want to go so uh yes ma'am hi uh hi sir hi narang sir hello bharat yeah this is uh bharat from vayu shastra aerospace uh we are a iit madras incubated company we are into edit education tech and uh, i am the head of department drones so i am a drone trainer drone engineer and drone pilot uh and i would like to ask you about the few 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 parts which i need to ask sir there are like two three questions if you don't mind yeah yeah please don't worry i i, I have yes, enough time for yes sir so with regard to i think mr suresh asked about the remote pilot license but uh, now remote pilot license has been abolished and only remote pilot certificate is there sir yeah the only question is uh, i wanted to ask is as of now uh, the remote pilot certification is only there for rotor craft sir only multi copters so but i don't see any uh, any fto or rpto training on fixed wing or a uh, hybrid weight also why is that sir uh, bharat uh, I, i was aware of uh, these uh, syllabus being finalized uh, you just mail it to me uh, or send me a message i will come back to you i think uh, no no i do remember uh, for uh, fixed wing and as well as the uh, um, uh, switch um, you know uh, uh, Um, uh, other one, uh, the syllabus had already been finalized, and uh, uh, program was to uh, get uh, operationalized. If it is not, I will let you know. It's already work in progress. If it has not happened, okay, sir. Uh, one more question with regard to that, sir. The, uh, also in that, uh, with regard to the weight classification, sir, we are being only trained on mostly all the FTOs and the RPTOs are only being uh, giving training on small category of multi rotors, sir, and uh, only I think. Uh, anna university in chennai is giving the small and medium category of uh, rotor craft training sir i would also like to know that why that there is a limitation in the training of small and medium so we are only trained only on small and medium and uh, we have not not even going to large categories sir no uh, bharat uh, this industry is evolving so so far we have reached uh, you know uh, uh, you have to develop these drones they have to be uh, reliable and then how much is the employability of these drones if we do not have so many employability the training institution will not uh, flourish as the uh, proliferation starts now with the drone policy remember we came with the favorable drone policy only last year otherwise they were they were banned so indian drone industry was and last year was, was a flurry of new activities um, um, airspace maps were released which was unthinkable there were so many restrictions entire india has almost been made green barring the few areas uh, so um, pli scheme came um, swamitva scheme came kisan drone came iti program this came so there there is a big push to the drone industry so i am sure in due course we will have the large drone but large drone will take little time because first they have to get certified i don't uh, i don't think any large drone has been certified now so unless the drone is certified the drone training will have to wait no so if you have made some large drone you are welcome and uh, then of course we will see soon and things happen yes, sir with regard to that sir the large drone category for example e plane company is doing drone taxis sir so the 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 fine line there is if if they develop a drone which is above 500 kg then it comes it doesn't come under drone rules it becomes yeah. into it comes into aircraft rules and <laughs> when we are we are trying to develop a drone taxi which is below 500 kg then we have to follow the drone rules and develop it sir so that is also a, a kind of a irony here that we have to maintain that level of thing bharat so what, um, 
yeah sorry go ahead god sorry uh, no sir that, that that was my talk that was my question sir actually but uh, drone is an evolving you must understand uh, uh, aircraft rules uh, because you have to understand such a big flying machine flying and you have any near miss in an aircraft can you imagine so many lives being threatened yes, so uh, you cannot take a risk because the bigger machines will have more capability to fly they will be able to fly long distances they will be able to fly high altitudes high means uh, higher than the drone whereas small drones can fly at a relatively lower altitude cover small distances or even large distances at a lower distance lower altitude that may not be the case with a bigger drone so i think uh, log logic is absolutely right but uh, even when you talk of large drone certification will take its time so somebody has to take the initiative the way those who are involved they they will vouch for me that how much time it took for certification of small drones initially it was a big process and i remember people sweating it out in drone federation of india and some of the other industry players uh, having sleep let nice to get a small drone certified so i think we are moving into a next step and hopefully we will have a large drone and other issues being addressed sure sir sure. thank you so much one last question sir with regard to the training part i see yeah. we, we are lacking in the training part so vai shastra is one company which is uh, you know i i being i have recently joined the company but uh, we are developing uh, drones also we are giving drone training so the people here i i just uh, humbly ask the people here who like to learn about drones and the technology behind it the drone rules behind it please do approach vai shastra we are ready to help you and also train you yes sir thank you thank All you right. so much thank you sir yeah couple of questions that uh, we have that had been submitted to us earlier for us regarding the future of drones in the entertainment industry for one and yeah. in uh, agriculture for another so what do you feel about you know the future of drones in these two sectors sir? especially maybe agriculture agriculture has been a uh, focus of this government if you see uh, if you listen to the budget speech of this government uh, finance minister had said that we are uh, promoting kisan drones adoption of drone there are multiple programs going in this country to the village level how drone will be adopted in all parts of india so there is a big thrust given by the government of india and agriculture is going to be uh, adopted even medical uh, and uh, people uh, last year we carried out uh, you know trials for beyond visual line of sight operation so uh, that was a trial sortie to understand how how far we can go with a drone beyond visual line of sight so new capabilities are likely to add in due course and agriculture is certainly a promising uh, field medical is another and many other new applications and adoptions is expected to take place in the near uh, time yeah supanika yeah yeah thank you so much sir so yeah unless uh, if, if uh, anyone wants to go quickly i think uh, we can wrap it up solid today today yeah. yeah thank you so i thank all of you you uh, our startups for you know patiently wait bearing with us in the initial few you know during the glitch and all that and we uh, thank uh, group captain narang uh, today to for giving us such an interesting session and uh, yeah we hope we'll uh, meet you in, uh, on another uh, session soon and for our uh, ic incubated startups we'll probably be sending you a feedback form as usual and uh, you can uh, give your suggestions and thoughts and uh, for those of you have who have given us uh, your email id today we'll try to share the uh, uh, captain's uh, ppt with you yeah for anything else of course you can, as he has told you can always uh, you know get in touch with him or uh, you know try to grab a copy of this book so see you all in another session soon So thank you captain arun so much thank for you. your time today thank, thank you. you thank you good evening everyone